got a different type of video for today. We're going to talk about documentation, but why? Like why talk about documentation? That's so, I mean, that's just incredibly boring. So one of the first problems that I ever ran into when I first started my career as a software engineer, um, and even now as I've moved into an application security role is documentation and documentation is huge. Mostly because when it's not there, it can be horrible. And when it is there, it can still be horrible. What I mean is that a lot of times you need it and there's none to be found. And sometimes even when there is documentation written, um, it's written in this way where you just you still struggle to find the answer for what you're really looking for. It's almost like you can um, you can drown in too much documentation or you can starve if not enough of it is there. I realize the documentation is not something that anybody wants to work on. You have email streams that you've done code as documentation. You've maybe done unit tests. Um, you've got integration tests. You've got a whole just environment of things telling you what you've done all around you. So why should you document anything at all? And it's this one point. It's because you're going to use it or you're going to want to use it. That's the whole key point. And if it's something that you're going to want to use and you're going to have to rely on it when in the uh, in those hard situations, you might as well make it as as enjoyable and as easy and as efficient to use as possible. That's the whole point. Now, diving in a little bit deeper into that, into you know why should you document? It's because stuff is going to break. And I don't mean that the code could be written a little bit better, things could be more terse. What I mean is, have you ever seen, have you ever gotten really deep into a code base? You know, something that's been in place for five, 10, 20, 30, even 40 or 50 years. Um, my first job as a software engineer was for an insurance firm. The majority of the code base was in COBOL. They were still running on in a mainframe environment, all the icky stuff and all the crazy good stuff, multiple just decades of time in between that. You can imagine, regardless of the language, things really did get weird. And what I mean by that was I remember distinctly opening up a program. Um, I had to fill out a ticket and it was because some executive's name and employee number or something like that was hard coded into the uh, into the program and that person had retired and was no longer at the at the organization for some time um, their departure was roughly six to nine months prior to this ticket being opened up and being worked on um, and this stuff was hard-coded the point I'm making is that all of this stuff was brittle it was hard-coded it could be engineered better it should be engineered better but it simply couldn't be because the lift in order to do that um, was far too great for what was for the resources that we had available at the time so document because you're going to get logic creep you're going to have the weird stuff when the uh, when the code base grows into these crazy things that really almost should never happen but it happens because inevitably there's people that are running okay so the next point is dynamic documentation or what i'm calling this idea of dynamic documentation i feel like when i've introduced documentation to other team members in the past um, across various teams or really just anyone tried to try to have this talk with anyone there's kind of just like this this undertone of we all know what it is we don't like that documentation is just really it's boring it's dry you're grateful for it when you have it and it's and it answers your question but no one even wants to read it because it's so boring to go through no one wants to write it for all the stuff i've listed before and so what i'm suggesting is to change the way that we write documentation change what is an acceptable level of quality for what we're going to call our documentation that's essentially going to be the answer for what we're looking for now what i mean by this is that when something needs to be done really quickly if you just need to just write down an answer or just get a note written down and it is just plain text and that that's fine but when you've got the time or when you have a whole system or you're finally you know you've gone through a week of debugging and you have this is amount of information to just dump down onto the page don't let it just be words draw a diagram go find an image go uh, create an image heck you know shoot a video really quickly and try to host it you know post a video somewhere um, and you know link to that if you can I understand that some organizations you run into 
various things where you can't have third party content coming in and all that sort of thing. Um, but the other thing that you can do outside of that is start investigating uh, certain tools like MDX. This is something that could be fairly a, a fairly large lift um, if you already have tooling in place that's ingrained inside the company intranet or you're already using um, some sort of paid for tool. But MDX is an excellent um, tool that I really hope becomes more mainstream because instead of if you're already writing um, your documentation in Markdown, which is a lot of tools do this, the Markdown is great because you can get in there and you can just quickly start writing. You don't have to wait for something heavy like Microsoft Word. You don't have to have this huge editor that gets in the way and is buggy and has its own keyboard shortcuts to try to keep things efficient. You just have code snippets to give you the minimal amount of formatting that you need. You can start writing right away. It's just a flat file. It's portable. It's transportable. And you can use it across all kinds of places. MDX takes everything that I just gushed about with Markdown and turns it up to 11. MDX basically allows you to write your own React components directly inside your Markdown. Now, that sounds crazy. Like, you know, why would I want to start programming when I'm supposed to be documenting the programming that I just got done doing is if you're able to have the dynamic content directly inside of your documentation pages. So instead of just saying, you know, here's an explanation of what this code snippet does and here's what the code looks like, you could potentially put something right next to that same code snippet that shows what it is and allows the reader to actually interact with with what it is you know imagine if you have a custom button written for your team and you know for for your ui ux team and instead of just saying here's the code snippet here's the options and that's what it is and okay cool you know done instead what you can do is you can actually put the button right there next to the code snippet and allow someone to interact with it so that they can actually be able to interact and play with what you're documenting in in real time um on top of that look at things um, like take a look at you know github recently added support for automatically creating table contents directly inside of the of the readme markdown files this is something that i've i've personally seen a bunch of uh github public github repositories where they tried to make a table of contents and it sort of works and it's great and you've you know even in markdown you've had the headers for a while um and those work too but this is something that github put you know directly there and i get it this works in github it doesn't exactly work other places but just like the mdx point um this is an idea that you might be able to carry with you and put in place somewhere else or it might inspire you to you know kind of create something else um, there's also tools like draw.io. This is something that I use all the time when I need to wire up a really quick diagram or, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's not so quick. Maybe I'm going to spend a little bit of time on it, but you know, for instance, I might be documenting a whole, um, like a, a couple of microservices and how they interact with each other. I might be, um, or also how a couple of APIs interact with each other, include that directly in a document somewhere else to reference it and it kind of it brings the context with you and when you start throwing all of that into your documentation you start adding a lot more context and that's what's key something that is not just prose is worth so much than what just trying to re-explain it on the paper can can do for you now i kind of touched on this point um a, a little bit earlier and this is kind of just a really quick almost like a bonus point is that whenever you can make it quick and i don't mean make the documentation writing process quick what i mean is reduce the friction as much as possible for your developers, your project managers, your analysts, your business analysts, anyone who is going to create documentation in your organization, make sure that they have as the least amount of friction as possible to actually write the documentation. If it takes me 10 minutes to go through the standards just to open a document, know where to save it or not know where to save it, look for all kinds of things just to get started so I can just write something down and then I don't know if I am if I can count on actually being able to find it later on, nothing's gonna get written down. That's just the way that it is. 
make sure that they can get in and get out because if you can't do that if the pull process is full of friction no one's going to write anything anyway and that is the worst possible scenario when nothing is written down the last thing that i want to close with is that documenting it's not simply writing down the technical minutia of the job. It becomes a field manual. It becomes a treasure trove of information. It becomes that thing that you may rely on whenever you've got a triage situation and an emergency is happening and the quote unquote building is on fire in the middle of the night. You're going to rely on it when those things happen. So make sure that you actually take the time to invest in the efficiency, invest in the productivity, it think of it as an investment it's not just it's not a pain and a chore and a thing that you have to do just to check a box if your standards and processes are set up that way or such a way that it makes it feel that way then take a look at the at the larger process because you're going to have to document things if you don't document them for yourself you're going to have to eventually document them in an email or in a report or in an audit for something else for someone else and if you don't write that down either then that's lost as well documentation is an investment towards productivity I hope you like this video. Um, I know that it's not the easiest topic or the best topic that anybody wants to talk about. Documentation in a lot of ways is really boring. Almost no one wants to write it, including me. I almost never want to write it, but when I do, I really want to make it um, the best that I possibly can. If you want to read uh, more of all of this, kind of in a possibly a better format than just a video talking about this, um, check out my blog. Check out my website where this blog post, um, I've, it's been there for a couple of weeks now. Um, some of these videos, I try to write them up and then I use the blog post as a kind of a pseudo script. So if you want to know what I'm talking about and what I'm doing, check the website. That's going to be linked below. Let me know what you thought about this. Let me know if you have any other ideas or if you think that I'm completely wrong or if you wish that more people did this. Tell me in the comments below. Um, check out the blog post. And I think I um, if you like the video, consider subscribing. If you uh, also hit the like button, if you didn't like it, go ahead and hit the dislike button. Let me know that you didn't like it either. Yes, I didn't say something like hit it twice. I said actually hit the dislike button. If you disagree, I want to hear about it. Anyway, if whatever else you want to hear me talk about, if you want to describe or discuss anything else, um, let me know. And um, until then, keep building.